if you guys could learn to use the whip and dumbbell, like remember we were talking about low drive, medium drive, high drive. Right. So like what we were talking about is I want my long down to be low okay, drive. Um, oh, Obviously, I don't want it's low drive, chill. I want my foos to be medium drive, but dumbbells high drive, but they have to go into a low drive right away for the So that's, kind of, that's what makes the dumbbells tricky. But for me, the drive is very important and maybe something to think about uh, that we can work on uh, okay. later oh, is back tie with the dumbbell. You get them almost in a high drive protection mode. And then you hold Truda and I load. And then I throw the dumbbell. Bring and on the way back I stand behind. So you get that that mood of the high drive. I don't know if the ball is going to sustain it. Yeah. I like the whip idea. The whip is really good, but then you have to, they have, like, think of your negative commands. What are my negative commands? <coughs> no. You no know is obviously one, quiet. Quiet's always a negative command for Stop. me. Um, yeah, leave it. So anything that's going to require a correction. <coughs> so they have to understand the word quiet. So if my dog's on a long down and you see them doing this and they take a hip and then they kind of get a little fidgety, you'll hear me say quiet. And somebody will say, he wasn't barking. Quiet doesn't mean barking. Quiet means find a very still place. So right when they come it's in like with the mood. dumbbell, and I teach it with a toy. So I'm playing with them, and they do like very energetic play, and I'll go, quiet. Yes. So it's out of context. The quiet means hold this very still. And, you'll and hear you're like, my... like doing something fun too, so it's not like a lot of pressure on the dog, right? Well, yeah. Then I go back into play. So it's hot <coughs> off the dumbbell. So it's not taught negatively, but later on I will use low stem like tick tick for quiet. Um, you'll see my helper on an escape bite or a drive. If you see a shift, quiet, I'll say quiet. So if I see any movement on the sleeve, quiet. Then, they, then just if they're coming kind of chewy a little bit. Yeah, or if they're trying to readjust their grip. So like I let them. So if a dog gets a bad grip on a quick helper on the escape bite. That's really not a big deal. It's what do you do with the bad grip? So I want to see this. So sometimes in our club, we'll give a dog a bad grip on purpose on a back tie. I'll give the dog a bad grip. So it's a real bad grip. And then when the dog re-grips, yes, you know, click and let them have it so they understand, ah. Well, if you do too much of this, what do they think gets them the reward? The re-grip. And then you start having munching and then you start what you call pulsing because they're like and I'm like you're already full so once they have a really good regrip it's important not to do that exercise too much with the bad grip because then they start always trying to dig in deeper so that's what Slayer does he mm -hmm. will keep trying to go deeper even though he's deeper so I have to get onto him a little bit on the sleeve I'm like you already have a full grip you're not Stop getting trying to. <laughs> then it starts getting into pulsing and you know, it's not like this, it's just, you can see my thumb, it's just. They'll just make his, like, his back jaws bleed. Yeah, and it, it, well, and it's pulsing. You can see the sleeve pulsing a little. So he has to really start to understand this word quiet on in that aspect. But if they understand it as a way of life, it really helps in dumbbells. Then you can go to the high drive, which is the whip on a back tie play with the dumbbell. And I would like to uh, try something with her. It won't. Uh, can we bring her back out and I see if I can load her with the whip a little? It won't hurt anything. No. No. You don't want to go any further backwards. Yeah. 